Here's a radio in progress, still working on it. Got the 8-track player, eh, working about halfway. Still have to install a belt and clean it up some, but I actually have it working now. Um, figured the wiring out for the owner. Uh, he got this radio with absolutely no instructions, so really no clue how to hook anything up, but uh, it does work, so. And this has a boatload of multifunction controls. The right controls are fairly simple. Tuning control, and then it's loose because these are adjustable. This is a universal radio meant to fit pretty much anything you want to stick it in. So the nuts just aren't tight for this. So shafts can be moved in and out, up and down. So basically you make this fit any car you want. But uh, anyhow, has the tuning control, and then has your fader or uh, right and left control. Over here on the right, you have the on-off and then volume. If you pull the control out, it is your, let's see, front to rear fader. So turn the volume up some, pull the control out. Oops, have those speakers turned off. This control, as it is, just grab it and turn it. This is your tune control. Push it in and turn it. It's a bass control. And then this control here, your on-off and volume control, if you push it, that is your track control. So... Having a hard time getting the tapes to start. Uh, the mechanism is all the lubricant on it so dry. This thing was made in uh, 1978, judging by the date codes on the ICs and a couple other parts. So everything's pretty dried out, but it does work. Um, over here, see it's only drawn just a little bit under a half amp. Even at full volume, it barely even reaches an amp. It's not it's not a powerhouse for volume, but uh, and then. I've got it run through the two BNCs out here, come over, go to the scope. It also runs, also paralleled over to the Sencor stereo power analyzer. Just wanted to do a quick video to show you it is alive and does work. Needs a little bit more work, but uh, so no major catastrophic failures with this thing. So there you go. Oh, and that's the other thing. It's a Cobra without a CB radio. I can't say I've ever seen one. I've called everybody and emailed everybody I know that works on radios. Not that there's many of us left anymore. Um, even guys that specialize in 8-track players, so they work on a lot of this kind of stuff. Nobody has seen a Cobra 222 GTL before, because it's an AM, FM, 8-track player, and that's it. No CB radio. I've worked on lots of, like, you know, the 55 XLRs and all the other different models of Cobra. I, Cobra didn't make them. Most of those were unit and chassis, but, uh, you know, they all had CB radios. This one, on the other hand, just a radio 8-track player. Um, there's literally no service information to be found anywhere on this thing. Sam's doesn't have anything. Um, Cobra doesn't even know it exists. Contacted Cobra. Never heard of it. Of course, their records, what do they care about something made in the 70s? But they didn't show anything about it being made. So, who knows? Maybe the last one or the only one on the planet. So, there you go. Cobra 222 GTL. And the little feature, like most 8-tracks, uh, turn the radio off and your 8-track pops out. Oh, and then actually, you can see this uh, another neat little feature. It has a digital clock. 
And then you're, you're hooked up to an antenna, of course. And you have your AM FM. Of course, it's the clock is actually right, so it's you know just about twelve what twelve nineteen in the morning, so all the AM stations have kicked their power back. But it does work, and it has a local long distance, so if you're being overpowered by a station, you can go to low power, and that's basically a attenuator that cuts back on the incoming signal. And then you have when you're in AM FM. When you're in AM and FM, you have mono stereo. Actually, get the station tuned in. And you can set your presets, of course. So, neat little radio. Rare as hen's tea, said they say.